powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this first day of April. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, it's no April Fool's joke. Confirmed COVID-19 cases surpassed 200 across Montana today. Just this morning, confirmed cases reached 208. That's an additional 10 since Tuesday afternoon. Total deaths remain at five. Just this morning, Gallatin County moved to 76 confirmed cases. Yellowstone County is next at 32. We are two and a half weeks in from the first confirmed Montana case on March 13th. More than 4,900 people have been tested so far across the state. The number of those hospitalized remains at 17 as of this morning. Now, the White House's Coronavirus Task Force today warning the worst is yet to come in the fight against this pandemic. Natalie Brand is at the White House with the very latest. As we're saying, John, this could be a hell of a bad two weeks. The this president says extending social distancing guidelines for the next 30 days is a matter of life and death. But even with restrictions in place, modeling shows 100 to 200,000 people could still die in the U.S. We don't accept that number that that's what's going to be. We're going to be doing everything we can to get it even significantly below that. One possible new measure could be asking Americans to wear masks once the supply increases. We've asked the CDC to take another look at whether or not having more people wear masks will prevent transmission of the disease to other people. While most states have issued stay at home orders, there is still no plan for a national mandate. If you're never within six feet of any single individual, um, then you've controlled the virus. President Trump and Defense Secretary Mark Esper will hold a conference call this afternoon with service members and their families as the response and threat of COVID-19 impacts the military. We are going to take care of our people. That's job number one. The Department of Defense is now dealing with an outbreak aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt. The ship's captain sent an urgent letter saying we go to war with the force we have and fight sick, but added that sailors don't need to die and called it an unnecessary risk to keep them on board. Is it time to evacuate that ship? I don't think we're at that point, Nora. At this point in time, we're trying to make sure that we contain the virus, that we deploy testing kits so we get a good assessment of how much of the crew is infected and then of course taking other measures to ensure we can get the uh, the carrier up and ready again to uh, to continue its mission. The Roosevelt is currently in port in Guam and the infected sailors have been taken off the ship. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Acting Navy Secretary Thomas Modley told CNN the Pentagon is working with Guam to find hotel space and even create tent type facilities to house the sailors if they are taken off the ship. Well, as the state continues to fight against the spread of coronavirus, Montanans will not be kicked out of their homes or penalized. Yesterday, Governor Steve Bullock issued a directive banning evictions, foreclosures and late fees. Now that directive just in time, as for many rent and mortgages do. Many Montanans have been laid off and applying for unemployment can take weeks, but there is some hope with property management companies offering different options. And then we see it right now. Sometimes the very worst circumstances bring out the very best in people. And if we're going to get through this together as a nation, as a state and as a community in Great Falls, Montana, we have to have each other's backs. The world's busiest airport has lost more than half of its traffic because of the coronavirus outbreak. Officials say flights are down by 60 percent at Atlanta's Hartsfield Jackson International. The airport usually sees about 2,700 arrivals or departures per day, but now it's down to about 1,100. Hartsfield Jackson handled about 107 million travelers in 2018. Well, the Montana airline industry is also taking a big hit with the spread of COVID-19. Missoula International Airport is a testament to that. Russ Thomas explains. March and April are typically a busy time for Missoula International Airport, as many leave Missoula during spring break while snowbirds begin flying in for the warmer months ahead. This spring, the airport looks like a virtual ghost town, thanks to ramped up restrictions and coronavirus fears. The trend has, has certainly been downward. We're averaging about 100 passengers a day uh, now across all airlines and all flights. 
With less airport foot traffic in Missoula, across the country and across the world, air carriers are having to make unprecedented adjustments, including greatly reducing the number of flights to fill seats. Well, the airlines are, are scrambling just like uh, we all are. And what we're seeing is that you're seeing a daily kind of ad hoc canceling of flights, if you will. I think their goal is to generally try to consolidate passengers onto a single flight. So instead of four uh, daily Seattle flights, you might just see one. Jensen says the impact of the reduction of passengers and flights has brought a sudden adjustment in revenue, budgeting, and staff hours. This affects us across all areas of the operation and pretty radical changes unlike anything we've ever seen before. Jensen says he expects the reduction in flights and passengers will continue through April and May. In Missoula, Russ Thomas, MTN News. Thanks, Russ. It's time now to check in on the weather scene and a good afternoon to Rob Griggs. Will Rob, some parts of Montana, more snow than others. Yep, and you can see on the map right now with all the watches and warnings where the concentration of all of that snow is. Take a look at this right now. A lot of these advisories and warnings have already popped off the map, but you notice a lot of purple and pink from central toward eastern Montana, especially in southeastern Montana. At least that's going to be the case a little later on. We'll talk about those watches and warnings in, in just a couple of minutes, but I want to show you where the concentrations of snow between between Jordan, Glasgow, Glendive, and even Miles City. Uh, down there toward southern Montana, between Buildings, Livingston, and Cody, Wyoming, you see some more snow developing, and that's what's coming up on us here for the later part of the day. You can see where the remaining snowfall is expected between now and noon tomorrow. Most of that is going to be in Wyoming, but it might eke into Montana just a little bit. A complete forecast in just a little bit, Janelle? All right, thanks, Rob. Well, Montana rattled by a 6.5 magnitude earthquake with an epicenter in Idaho. Take a look. This video comes from a reporter working from home in Boise. People felt the earthquake in western Montana as far east as Great Falls. Now, it struck northeast of Boise just after 6 o'clock last night. As of now, there have been no reports of injuries. Thank heavens. Well, we have more ahead on your statewide noon news. We meet some young Montanans who are stepping up and coming together to help others at times like this. Time now is 12.06, but first, Rob's up next with your statewide weather forecast. 